Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway. Just a quick one today, but I'm going to try a little bit of a model painting experiment. You probably know, or you can probably deduce, that I am not gifted with a paintbrush. And that's the whole reason why I bought an airbrush instead, because every time I try to paint something with my hands with an actual paintbrush, it comes out wobbly, and the finer the detailing, the more terrible it tends to come out. So I bought an airbrush, and as you know, that went quite well. I'm not particularly skilled at it or anything, but the things that I've tried to paint came out half decent looking, which I don't feel would be the case if I used a paintbrush. So that's all well and good, but there's a problem because the airbrush, as it comes straight out of the box, isn't great for painting finer details. And that's where this video comes in, because as you can see behind me, the locomotive that I finished with a few videos ago is in pieces again. I've dismantled it, and that's just it. It isn't finished. Uh, it was all painted quite nicely, except for the cab. The cab is blank. And of course, you can't just point your airbrush into the cab and paint the details, because it's too fine and you're just going to make a mess. You can't put masking tape around the little details as well because that's just ridiculous and I know full well that me trying to poke a little paintbrush into that cab to paint the different parts it's never going to work so you can forget that straight away so I've come up with I've invented a bit of a solution maybe they use this idea in manufacturing as well but it's a lazy way I'm hoping to paint cab detail but I don't know if it's going to work or not, so that's what I'm trying today. Let me show you what I came up with. So on my 3D printer, I produced these. And what these are are just four masks which are supposed to fit snugly into the locomotive cab, and these will allow me to only paint with the airbrush the parts of the cab that I'd like to. So I've got one here. This mask is full of circular holes, and these match up to the gauges inside the cab, so I could paint those one colour. Then there is this one. This matches up to the various pipework and such, so obviously I can paint the pipework a nice metal or copper colour, something like that. Uh, then there is this one. Uh, can you guess what this is for? This one's going to be for the regulator. That's going to be a sort of standout red, I suppose, as regulators often are. And then the last one is this. I'm not sure what colour I will use with this, but this one is going to be for the water gauges, maybe a, a lightish colour for those, and also uh, one of the other things. I'm not actually sure what that thing is, but I wanted it to be a different colour. So, I, like I say, it probably won't work, but if it fails, then you'll get to watch it and you get to enjoy seeing me fume that an idea didn't work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pop these into the cab, mask off the rest of the area, and see if I can't produce some decent cab cab painting detail, and I'm going to patent it and sell the idea to Hornby or something. No, no, that's just not true. Okay, let's give this a try. Let's get to painting. And as always, safety first. I've never actually mentioned this before. Sorry, people have always told me that you've got to wear a mask and such. I've had this right from the start. I don't always wear it, which is a bit naughty because I, I like to talk. But yeah, whenever I'm painting stuff, I do wear this respirator because I don't have any other ventilation. So, as I said, let's get to painting. Right, okay, I'm feeling good about this. Yeah, I'm ready. It's been a while since I've painted something, so looking forward to this. So here are the paints I've selected for this project. I'm going to start darkest first with Ferrari red, not fire red, yeah, Ferrari red. That's going to be for the regulator and such. I've got a gold here, which I'm going to try on the pipework. I think that'll look okay. Then for the water gauges, I've got an alu uh, aluminium. <laughs> I almost said aluminium then. I, I think people would kill me if I did. Then for the actual gauges, I've got white. Not at the point where I can put sort of uh, numbers and that on gauges. And then, assuming everything's finished and I consider the model satisfactory, I've got some satin varnish which I can put on the loco in its cab all over it and also on the tender as well and that should seal the paint job. So, first job is to move the paints out the way and I'm going to insert the first of my masks, that's going to be the regulator one, and then I'm going to make sure the whole area is completely covered over because I think the biggest pitfall with this project is that the paint is going to sort of spread out once it's passed through the 3D printed mask and then get paint on components that I'm not trying to paint. 
So if I mask everything up, I can pull the airbrush further away from the object I'm thinking, and hopefully that will focus the paint on the part of the model that I want to actually get paint on. So I'm thinking this looks good now. Hopefully everything is sealed and I won't get red paint all over my green loco. Let's pop some of the red into the airbrush and mask up and give it a try. Right, <laughs> well that was brief, wasn't it? Now I'm conscious of the fact that it looks quite wet in there because I didn't move the brush about as you're supposed to. So we'll let that dry for a second. I'll clean the brush out and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to unmask and see how this looks. Right, well, it's been a few minutes, so let's peel off some of this masking tape now and see what kind of mess I've made here. It's gonna be a lot of masking tape used today, I should think. And then I need something to push the uh, the piece out through the firebox. One second. Oh, it's come loose. Well, actually, that isn't so bad, is it? There's a little bit of paint bleed, so again, I need to be directly behind the piece, I think, so that it goes direct. So it's a good job that the first piece, the regulator, was the most basic piece, uh, because it's not great, but it's not terrible. There's not as much paint bleed as I thought there was going to be, which means we can move on and do the next one, which I think is going to be the pipe work. Now this is the big one, actually. Yeah, this is, this is definitely the big one. So this is gonna go in, hopefully, like so. Yeah, it's a good fit, it is a good fit, I'll give it that. And same thing, I've just gotta try and mask it off now. So. Yeah, this is definitely the bulk of the project, just sticking masking tape into the right place. But I think we've proved now that this concept is capable of working. I think I still need a bit of a steady hand though, don't I, in order to pull it off. I've got to at least point the, air, the airbrush in the right direction. It sounds simple enough, but when you're a total noob like I am, maybe it's not. I'm going to improvise my mask with a bit of blue tack. Now, how's that for an idea? Because <laughs> I've got some little gaps here that I want to seal up and the masking tape is too clumsy to fill the gap properly. So if I put some blue tack in, that should really stop the paint going and hitting the back wall. Right, let's do this then. Gold colour, move all my valuables out of the way and we'll give this a shot. Okay, well, this gold I've put on quite thickly, I think because it's a sort of thinner colour, you don't see it so well, so I think it could still be a little wet, so I'm going to get this off very, very carefully if possible. Okay, let's push this out. Hey, do you know what? It isn't perfect. <laughs> but it actually does look half decent, particularly on that lower pipe work there. This is actually not too bad at all. Uh, it's not the cleanest job in the world. I think really the masks need to be closer to the surface of the cab, and perhaps I'd have to tweak the design to do that. But you know what? So far, this is looking better than no cab detail at all, and I'll settle for that. So let's get on and do the next part. I think that's going to be the water gauges. Okay, so I am masked up again this time for the water gauges and that other little thing that I didn't know what it was, but I feel like it should be painted. <laughs> so here we go, I'm gonna use, a, 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 I've done it again, aluminium, right. Let's give this a shake, see what we can do with this. This will be the first time I've ever tried this paint, so I really don't know what it's gonna look like. But I mean, if I had to guess, it's probably gonna look like aluminium, but it would be nice to find out for sure. Okay, here we go then, aluminio. Well, let's give this paint a dry first. All right, so this is quite dark actually. Hmm.
Yeah, looking good. Right. <laughs> it's very brief, isn't it, each uh, little painting session. Right. Oh, I forgot my mask that time. Oh, naughty. Right, cleaning out the airbrush. I'll be back. I tell you what, it's worth it just to have this moment of pulling off all the masks and seeing whether it's worked or not. Uh, yeah, you get in that moment like every few minutes today. Right, let's get this off and see. Okay. Yeah, I mean, again, yeah, there's a bit of uh, spillage, if you will, but I suppose that's to be expected. Doesn't look too bad, though. Yeah, not too bad. And I guess that means there's just one more process, and it's possibly the most dodgy of them all, because there's lots of them, and some of them are close to the edge. It is the actual white gauges. So I'm going to mask up, and we'll finish with that, and then some varnish. Okay, let's have a last look. And I've also developed a daring plan. <laughs> you know how I said I was rubbish with a paintbrush? Well, I think I might try just going in there with a paintbrush and um, just rebrowning some of the backs of the cab that have got some of the paint spill on them. And, you know, if it doesn't work and it goes wrong and I mess it up badly, I can use the airbrush and redo some of what I've just done and it will be fine. So, yeah, I'll try it, I'll try it. Okay, yeah, not too bad. I mean, there is paint on the gauges, which is correct, but as you can see, there is quite a bit of paint bleed, which has cemented my decision to try and go in with a paintbrush and fix some of it. So, wish me luck. <laughs> it's probably not gonna work well, but I feel as though I have to try. Well, there you go, folks. <laughs> I'll tell you what, obviously it's not up to the standard of a manufacturer or anything, but I'm really pleased with the way that's come out. I think that will do the right thing, won't it? That'll do the job from any sort of distance. And I've picked up a brush and I've used it with my hands. Now, am I good with a brush? Almost certainly no, but that is a lot better than I thought I'd ever be able to do. So there you have it, not too bad at all. Next then, I'm gonna put some satin varnish onto the Loco to make it a bit more shinier like, or perhaps not too much shinier because it is only satin. Never mind, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's quite fumey, so I'm going to leave my mask on, I think. <laughs> let's do the tender. Okay, well, I'm going to get out of here now because it's a little bit poisonous. <laughs> so I'll come and put the loco back together in a minute and I'll show you the finished result. Okay. Well, there you have it then. That is my first scratch-built locomotive officially complete. Yeah, it's a funny looking thing, isn't it? Definitely an odd looking thing, but it's taught me everything I need to know, I think, about loco design. And so next time I might be able to do something a bit more refined and a bit more realistic. The finish on this isn't much altered by the satin finish. Perhaps it's a little bit more satin now, but hopefully the main difference will be that this will protect the paint from chipping and that kind of thing. And there is the cab detail. Of course, it doesn't look great up close, but I think from a bit further back, any sort of distance, as the thing runs past, you'll get a glance of the cab detail and it looks all right, I think. Again, it's nothing to shout about, but for my next loco, I now basically know how I can paint a cab. And that's all I wanted to get out of this loco, just a few skills, and I think I got them. So that's a success, if you ask me. So thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you've got any ideas on how to make any of this even better before I go on and try to do something a bit more serious. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, I will see you very, very soon for another video of some sort. Okay, take care, folks. See you on the next one.